now lock periodic antennas are as i as it has been told that it was designed to have operation over a broadband hmm. that means you will be able that means any ant the antenna will be able to uh, that means antenna will be able to have characteristic over a finite frequency range okay so uh, so therefore you will be having a frequency ratio of 10 is to 1 or even higher 10 is to 1 or even higher that means your upper cutoff frequency and between lower cutoff frequency you will be having suppose lower cutoff frequency is 1 gigahertz and upper cutoff frequency is 10 gigahertz so therefore your bandwidth will be 10 gigahertz so it is a very very broad band and the antenna will be successfully able to hold its characteristic the acceptable values hmm, over these all frequency point okay which is one of the important consideration for a broadband antenna or a wideband antenna okay so now regarding this lpda okay so you see dwight is bell in 1960 actually came out with this brilliant idea of lock periodic antennas and you can see here it is a gradually expanded periodic structure so it is a gradually expanding periodic structure so this is not a structure actually this is not a structure but this is actually the way how we how we take antenna okay so between this so between this actually you will get the different dipoles okay so i will just draw it and have to come out with few basic point okay and this will go on and on now before uh, coming with this all uh, you know theories which is written over here first you lay in your mind that the design consideration so this is important actually alpha this alpha is important because based on the values of alpha, the alpha value or rather the apex angle, this alpha value will decide how many dipoles will be there in your LPDA. Okay. So again, I'm repeating based on your alpha, you will be able to get these dipoles because, because you cannot have infinite uh, dipole elements. So these are all the individual dipole elements. So you cannot have an antenna with infinite dipole elements. So something will be there to guide how many will be the number of this alpha, uh, this uh, dipole element and that will be guided by this alpha, okay, or rather the apex angle, number one point. Number two point, uh, this, this actually goes in a progressive manner and here the variable is the length and as well as the spacing also, okay. So the length and the spacing also all are variable, okay, and the 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 and that is decided by tau okay which is a scale factor okay and that is decided by tau and that is a scale factor okay now you see here so as you can see here it's a twin line uh, transmission line okay twin pair whatever you want to say so as you can see here the connection so this is coming here this is the first element and it is just going 180 degree out of phase as you can see here all are fed with 180 degree out of phase. Hmm. So now, it is a gradually expanding periodic structure array which radiates most effectively when the array elements, dipoles are near resonance. So that is important actually. Okay. So as you can see here, tau which is given by Rn plus 1 by Rn. Okay. Which is given by Rn plus 1 by Rn. Okay. So, and also which is equal to Ln plus 1 by Ln is equal to Sn plus 1 plus Sn. Okay. So, R is basically distance from the apex of each dipole element. Okay. So, if this is the L, uh, this is the uh, nth dipole element. Okay. So, if this is the nth dipole element. Okay. If this is the nth dipole element. And if this is the n plus 1 dipole element. If this is the n plus 1 dipole element. Okay. So, tau 
a scale factor will be rn plus 1 by rn which is equal to ln plus 1 by ln which is equal to the spacing between the which is equal to the spacing between the individual dipole elements okay so alpha is apex angle tau is a scale factor s is equal to spacing between dipole r is equal to distance of the dipole from the apex and you can see here sn is nothing but rn plus 1 by rn plus 1 by uh, R, rn minus rn plus uh, minus rn plus 1 so it, that is basically this spacing nth spacing hmm. so now the question is why it is called the question is why it is called the question is why it is called logarithmic hmm. it is written no log periodic antenna so periodic structure it's okay but why it is log that is given by this classification this uh, explanation that log of tau so tau is equal to you can see here if you consider this one tau is equal to ln plus 1 divided by ln so if you take log both side you will get log of tau is equal to log of ln plus 1 minus log of ln so if you uh, just take this this side so it will be log of tau plus log of ln that means n plus 1 n plus 1 element will be given by the log of tau that is the scale factor log plus log of plus log of n ln so again next will be just simply okay simply log of that means the next element the next dipole element the length of the next dipole element obviously logarithmic in scale will just differ by log of tau okay and that is this logarithmic you know thing has come which signifies that every next length will increase as i told you by a value of log tau periodically and thus this antenna is named log periodic hmm. the same hold valid for distance from apex r and spacing so it, it will be the same thing so everything will be will be varying in accordance to this tau okay now let us go go with this uh, this angle so as you can see here this is the angle this is alpha okay so this is alpha so the biggest antenna element is l1 and it will go on considerably decreasing and later I, just for the sake of uh, reference i have taken this as ln and this is as ln plus 1 okay so tan alpha by 2 is equal to ln plus ln by 2 so uh, as it is alpha so it will be ln by 2 okay divided by rn because this corresponding to this cor this uh, dipole this dipole because uh, this dipole okay correspond to this much distance from the apex angle and that is nothing but this rn okay so and we can also say that tau is equal to this one we can also say that tau is equal to this one by this one okay so it is given by log of this one alpha by uh, is, is given by tan alpha by 2 is equal to ln by 2 divided by rn is equal to ln plus 1 by 2 divided by rn plus 1 so they, therefore we can say rn plus 1 okay is equal to tau of rn that was that was uh, that is what uh, has been uh, concluded that it will differ by tau and the same we can see over here hmm. and the spacing you can give by this term okay spacing is given by this term and one more factor is there which is the spacing factor okay which is denoted by sigma and it is given like this so now next come your functioning okay so as you can see here now regarding the functioning at a wavelength lambda radiations occurs from the portion of the structure where the dipole element is lambda by 2 long okay and that is very evident and that is very evident <laughs> that is very evident that this dipole why because this dipole will resonate for a fixed lambda or, of, of, or, or all the dipole are resonate at certain frequency okay so when the wavelength is increased the radiation zone moves to the right okay and when the wavelength is decreased it moves to the left with maximum radiation towards the apex or feed point of the array simple uh, previously we have discussed that when when the wavelength is uh, when the wavelength is increased that means 
when the wavelength is increased that is the frequency will decrease and when the frequency will decrease we have concluded earlier that you require a bigger antenna a bigger dipole element okay so if there is radiation the radiation will basically shift towards the the radiation will basically shift towards the right okay and when the wavelength is decreased it will shift towards the left okay what happened okay it will shift towards the left so that is what is explained over here okay now one thing more the cutoff frequency okay the cutoff frequency so you will be having an antenna will be basically basically you will get the broadband over here you will get a broadband over here okay so the the cutoff frequency that is the lower cutoff frequency and the higher cutoff frequency but the lower cutoff frequency can be determined by the electrical length of the longest uh, and shortest element of the structure okay now naturally the this is the lowest cutoff frequency mm. this lowest cutoff frequency will be handled by the higher uh, the longest dipole and the upper cutoff frequency will be taken care of by this smaller dipole so over the range uh, over the over the basically the range of frequency this all dipole will be successfully radiating mm. and this is how you get a broadband dipole using a broadband uh, uh, characteristic using a uh, lock periodic dipole antenna okay now uh, to explain let us come to uh, one tau let us take let us take tau is equal to let us take tau is equal to 1.12 now tau uh, sorry 1.2 now tau is equal to 1.2 is means nothing that your increment will be basically by 20% by 20% the the successive dipole the successive dipoles will increase in length by 20% compared to this one okay compared to this one one thing more you have to keep in mind that not only this because it's a pd structure and everything everything will uh, everything is in progression so not only this dipole length will increase by 20% but also this spacing will consecutively increase by 20% okay so that means you will be having so suppose so suppose if i start from here only suppose if this is so suppose if this is one of the Rather, let us start from here, from the feet point. So, if this is one, this is the first antenna element, and this is the second antenna element, which is increased by twenty percent. Now, this spacing S will also increase by twenty percent. Okay, like this, and this L dipole will also increase by twenty percent. Okay, little bit. Okay. 20% now again this spacing will increase by 20% and again this length will increase by 20% it will go on and on and on and this is how logarithmic this logarithmic dipole antenna uh, uh, this uh, log periodic dipole antenna basically is designed okay so you can see here which means incremental change that, that's what i told will be 20% for successive dipole element so if it is 1.5 suppose if tau is equal to 1.5 if tau is equal to 1.5 and more than 1.5 generally we will not take why because if you if you will increase this tau okay your spacing will be too much so if here is one antenna first element second antenna element will be here the third antenna element will be somewhere around here okay it will be very very far so the 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 antenna characteristic will not be smooth okay and therefore you should avoid greater value of tau actually 